All right, welcome back. Breaking news. Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer is reportedly going to retire at the end of his current term, giving Joe Biden a crucial opportunity to replace one of the liberal justices on the bench. Progressives have placed increasing pressure on Breyer in recent months to step down in order to allow Biden to shore up the court's liberal wing with a choice of his own. And of course, they want to do this before the midterms. But as we say, we don't agonize, we organize. And that is why I am running for re-election to Congress and respectfully seek your support. All right, and there you have it, Bianca, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, announcing that she will, in fact, seek another term in Congress. Well, you know, and this, of course, is dispelling, John, some speculation that her time in Washington was coming to an end. Let's get out to congressional correspondent Kilmeny Ducart, who's joining us with the very latest on this from Capitol Hill. Kilmeny? See you here. Well, the old saying, buy on the rumor or sell on the news, less applicable to politics here. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's team posted this video announcing that she'll run again. While we've made progress, much more needs to be done to improve people's lives. Our democracy is at risk because of assaults on the truth, the assault on the U.S. Capitol, and the state-by-state -state assault on voting rights. This election is crucial. Nothing less is at stake than our democracy. Well, notice in that video, she did not say whether she would seek another term as leader of the House amid growing calls for new leadership. And we spoke about this, John, last month, who a potential successor would be. Hakeem Jeffries, widely considered to be a favorite. Uh, but she faces a number of challenges, as Bianca mentioned, in her district. Rampant homelessness, rising crimes with these smash and grabs, uh, targeting high-end retailers. And despite that, she is still expected to win easily in her heavily Democratic district, despite having won the vote in 2020, um, or having won the vote, rather, in 2020 by 78 percent. That's a pretty big margin. But her push to stay in office could have something to do with the fact that there are 29 Democrats who have announced their resignations and they're staring down a potential GOP takeover in the midterm elections next year. But John, we've been talking to a lot about the fact that Pelosi has really been in the news more on whether she supports congressional legislation uh, banning lawmakers from trading stocks. And given the fact that she is one of the wealthiest members of Congress, owns stocks, she's really under pressure uh, to regulate this due to the fact that Congress is looking to regulate big tech. Yeah, I mean, it's been one of the issues. And, you know, Americans, 75 percent, do you want to see more regulation? Um, Kameni, before we let you go, though, we do want to ask you about this breaking news. Um, Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer, the oldest uh, member of the state's highest court, 83 years old, set to retire. By stepping down now, of course, also allows the court to stay with this 6-3 split, uh, liberal conservative judges. What are your thoughts? Absolutely, Bianca. You touched on a certain point. And when we talk about Pelosi's announcement for re-election, you can talk about the fact that this really mirrors the same timing here. There were not new calls for Breyer to step down and hang up his robe after 27 years of service. They've been pushing them to do that to avoid a repeat of what we saw with Ruth Bader Ginsburg when Obama had been pushing for her to retire and then Trump eked in a conservative appointment there. They don't want that to happen here. He served for 27 years, one of the oldest members, actually the oldest member of Congress right now. So, and then there's also just amid growing calls for maybe somebody that would be perhaps perhaps more lib liberal. Obviously, that's not going to swing uh, the court any more to the left, given the fact that you have uh, a 6-3 uh, justices. But I want to actually bring you some reaction to that retirement that we're seeing right now. Representative Lauren Boebert saying, uh, Justice Breyer is retiring. Joe B Biden will try to appoint a radical leftist. We need the Senate to stand strong for the Constitution. Um, Obviously, on the other side of the aisle, you have Congressman Chuy Garcia saying, I want to thank Justice Breyer for his years of service on the Supreme Court and congratulate him on his retirement. I look forward to seeing who POTUS will nominate to fill Justice Breyer's seat on the Supreme Court. And believe it or not, there's already names floating out there, including Kentonji Brown Jackson with the D.C. Circuit Court, um, Leandra Kruger, California Supreme Court, Michelle Childs, South Carolina District Court. So obviously, that's going to be all part of the discussion as we move forward here with those developments. 
All right, Kilmeny Dukar for us live on Capitol Hill. Thanks so much, Kilmeny. All right, let's welcome in our panel today, Rogan O'Hanley. DC Drano is here with us, as well as former Nassau County Executive Laura Coran. Bianca, of course, joining us as well. Great to have everyone here. Thank you. Thanks for having us on. All right, so Rogan, let's get your reaction real quick to the announcement, Stephen Breyer stepping down. I think this is an indication that Stephen Breyer, Democrats, uh, understand the reality of what's going to happen in 2022, and that if they don't uh, do this now, they may never get a chance to put another liberal justice back on the bench. Well, you nailed it, and unfortunately, it reeks of partisanship. You know, Breyer's no dummy. He's looking at the way the winds are blowing, and they have a razor-thin majority. Uh, it's 50-50 in the Senate, with Kamala adding number 51 to uh, pass to, to confirm a Supreme Court justice. So, you know, Justice Breyer is old. I mean, if he was going to do it, now is the time. Fortunately, this will not change the balance of the Supreme Court. You know, uh, Democrats are looking to put someone on maybe more leftist than he is, which is hard to believe, because then you're getting into Sotomayor territory, where you're just making up facts as you go along, because you really can't get farther left than Breyer. So uh, it's unfortunate to see, you know, Democrats get a spot to fill in the Supreme Court when they subvert the Constitution so much, but that's just politics. Yeah, you, you heard some of those names, uh, Laura, there. It, it does seem like this is a reaction to what happened with the Trump administration and their three justices. They're just going to try to push the court as far as they can with just one nominee all the way back to the left. You know, what I hear from so many people is they're very discouraged, whether they're Republican or Democrat, that the Supreme Court appears to have become so politicized. Uh, in our really divisive world right now, with all the rhetoric on both sides, there doesn't seem to be a place where there is just truth, where truth can live. It should be the Supreme Court, but the perception out there in the world is that there, that, that isn't the case anymore.